Hello and welcome back to our Jigsaw Piece puzzle game in UE4. In this episode we're working on the drag and drop functionality of our pieces. We need to be able to click and drag them around our scene here. So let's get started with that. The first thing we need to do is go to our Jigsaw Piece. And we need to set this up so we can click on it and drag it around. So go to the graph and then go to the functions and choose override. And we're going to use mouse button down because we want to check if we've clicked on it in order to drag it. So from there, we're going to then drag out from the uh, mouse event and do drag. And you'll see detect drag if pressed. Plug that in. And the drag key you want to choose is the left mouse button. And there you go. We then take the return value here and plug that into our return node. Hit compile and now save that. So that's all you need to do here. The next thing we do is change the detect drag event. So go to the functions, override, and you would choose the on drag detected, where is it? there it is. So what's happening here, the mouse is being clicked down on it. And if it detects that it's the left mouse button, it's gonna say, hey, detect drag, do it. Which is basically then saying, do this. Um, so this triggers this. So what we're going to do here is we need to create two things. We need to create a UI and we need to take a, create a drag and drop operation. So let's make those two things now. So the UI itself is very, very simple. It's just a widget blueprint. And this would be the jigsaw piece drag UI. And open it up. And this is only an image. So get rid of your canvas panel and chuck in your image. And we're gonna change the image name here to drag image. And we're gonna go and change the image size here to 128 by 128. Hit compile, change fill screen here to desired so you can see where you expect to see. So go now to the graph. And in the graph of this, we need to set up the various variables we need to see in order to create our material for this. So the variables we need are going to be the uh, image itself, so the jigsaw image. So jigsaw image, which is the texture 2D. We need the coordinates, so we we'll call this one piece coordinates, which is a vector 2D. And we need a number of pieces. which is going to be a integer. Once we've done that, we need to go to the pre-construct and we're going to set up the material instance here. So drag out and do create dynamic material instance. And we're going to choose our jigsaw, uh, what's it called? Puzzle M instance. And from that return value, we're going to drag out and promote to variable. And this is going to be called the jigsaw material. And from the jigsaw material, we're going to drag out from that pin and we need to set up a few uh, values. So we need to set up the number of pieces. So set scalar parameter value. And the parameter value for this name is going to be number of pieces. This is the same name that you use for your jigsaw piece. So if I go jigsaw piece, so pretty much the same that we got basically here. In fact, we can copy most of this stuff. So let's copy this, this, and this, and this, and uh, this. No, not that. So I just want the parameter value. So set scalar parameter value, set vector parameter value, and texture parameter value. I'm going to set the jigsaw piece ones because that's referring to the local value that we set up for the material here which need these ones so i'm going to copy those and go to my piece drag ui and let's just replace that with our pasted information here okay so we need to change our piece coordinate here from there to piece coordinates here split this x into r y into g that's that done and that's that done the targets for these should be equal to the jigsaw material. So drag that out there. And we do jigsaw material there. And jigsaw material there. 
And the last step is to assign that material to the image. So drag your image out here and set brush for material. And the material is going to be your jigsaw material. And hit compile and save. That's it. So that's the UI bit. So this, this thing is the, the thing that you see floating about when you're dragging your mouse around. So that's what you want there. Hit save on that. Next we need to make the drag and drop operation. So go to add blueprint class and in the all classes search box search for drag and drop operation and select that. Here we're going to do jigsaw drag drop and open it up. So the purpose of the jigsaw drag and drop is a operation that contains information that you're dragging around. So I want to drag around two pieces of information. I want to drag around the coordinate that I'm dragging and also the actual piece that I've picked up so we can remove it from the tray. So on the variable list, add new variable and we'll do piece coordinate. And that's going to be a vector 2D. And another variable here, which is going to be the piece itself. So we we'll refer to piece and the variable type here is going to be jigsaw piece object reference. And this refers to the UI bit that we've got floating around in our own tray. Hit compile and save that. And we want to expose these and expose them on spawn as well. So editable, expose on spawn. Hit compile and then save. We're then going to go back to our jigsaw piece here. On our jigsaw piece, we started work on our drag detected event here. So the first thing you need to do is create the UI. So create a widget and the widget we're creating is our jigsaw piece drag UI and hit compile uh, we didn't actually send that information across so let's go into that quickly drag UI graph and we need to make these editable so and expose on spawn save that refresh this node and there they go so these all should be in this list here for your jigsaw piece. So just line them up. So jigsaw image is there, piece coordinates there, and number of pieces is there. Excellent too. So we're now going to take from there and we need to create drag and drop operation. And this is the actual operation that's being carried out. So on here we're going to choose the class and choose our jigsaw drop drag and drop. And we now see we've got two options here. We've got the piece that we're referring to and the piece coordinate. So quite simply, we're going to plug in our piece coordinate like so. And the piece is going to be a reference to itself because this itself is the piece that you're clicking on. Hit that like so. Now you see an option for default drag visual. That is the purpose of your drag UI. So take the return value and drag that down to default drag visual. And we are good to go there. Hit compile and save. We're then going to take our return value and plug that into the operation here at the end. Compile and save that. And I think we're done there. Let's close that. Okay, so let's test that out now. So if I go push play, and if I click with the mouse and drag, the image comes along with my mouse. You see the original one is still there, we can work on that in a second, but ultimately we've got this working. Now it won't work when we drag over to these slots just yet, we'll get to those in a moment. Now when I do let go of the mouse, notice that the mouse disappears. And that's because our controller is set up to not register it as a UI uh, game mode. So we need to make a custom player controller for this. So let's create that, go to blueprint class, player controller, and we call this one the jigsaw controller. And in there, we're going to go and to the event graph. And we're going to, first of all, go to the class defaults and tell it to show mouse cursor all the time. And then we're going to change the input mode. So on begin play, you go set input mode to UI only. The player controller is itself. And the widget focus is nothing. You can leave that as is. You compile and save that. Now we have to tell it to use our uh, controller. So go to project settings, go to maps and modes, change it to selected default mode here, 
and we need to make a custom game mode that we haven't got yet. So let's make that quickly. Go to Blueprint Class, Game Mode Base, and call it Jigsaw Game Mode. In there, we're going to set our controller for our player controller to Jigsaw Controller. Compile, save, and tell our project settings to use that mode instead. So Jigsaw Game Mode, and you should see here the player controller class is now Jigsaw Controller, which is correct. Now hit play, and now I can click and drag freely my options. So as I said, we're still like making a copy basically of what you're doing. That's how drag and dropping works. It creates like a copy. And you want to then hide or remove the one that's there first. So I just want to hide it. Okay, so one when we go to jigsaw piece and when we go to create our jigsaw drag and drop operation, before we return it, we're going to say from here, set visibility and the target is self and the invisibility will be hidden. And I'm just going to bend this line around so it doesn't get too confusing for people. Compile and save that. And now push play. Click and drag will move the pieces and it looks like you're dragging them away and lose them. So as you see, they're disappearing for good. We have to make the drag and drop cancelled operation to tell it to undo the visibility. So let's go through that process now. So head over to Drigsaw drag and drop operation. And in the functions, you want to override the drag cancelled function. And very simply, we're going to drag our piece variable out here, which is a stored variable of the piece that we clicked on originally. So choose get piece. And then from there, set visibility. Plug that in and change the visibility quite simply to visible. Hit compile and save. Now if I test that out, hit play. You can see I can let go of it and it snaps back to its original location. And there you have it. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we drag the piece on top of a slot. It will check the puzzle coordinates. If they're correct, it will make it snap to there and build our picture up. So join us in the next episode over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can watch all of my videos well before anyone else. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons for their continued support. It really is amazing, so thank you again so, so much. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button and don't miss any of my content coming out every single week. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.